Hello, this is Shanil Jain with World Medical School and today I will talk about polycythemia. I will discuss the definition, pathophysiology, classification, how polycythemia presents, lab values that are important, and the treatment. Polycythemia is defined as an increase in the number of RBCs in the blood, which also increases the hemoglobin. In males, hemoglobin greater than 18.5 with hematocrit of greater than 53%, while in females, hemoglobin greater than 16.5 with hematocrit of greater than 47%. Polycythemia is categorized into two categories, relative and absolute. Relative polycythemia is due to low volume states. Absolute can be further categorized into primary and secondary. Primary polycythemia is due to polycythemia rubra vera. Secondary polycythemia can be further divided into appropriate and inappropriate. And I will discuss each of these in some detail in the next couple of slides. Relative polycythemia, as we said earlier, is due to low volume states. The problem is that the body is dehydrated and it seems that the hemoglobin and hematocrit are high, but really they are not. It's relative. Third spacing due to burns can cause low volume states. Prolonged vomiting and diarrhea can lead to fluid loss from the GI tract. Too much diuretic use gets rid of excess water. Stress or gaze box syndrome may also lead to low volume states. Continuing on with the classification, absolute polycythemia, as I mentioned, could be primary or secondary. Primary is due to polycythemia rubra vera, which can present as itching after a hot shower. Secondary polycythemia can be appropriate or inappropriate. Appropriate is due to any conditions that leads to hypoxic states or states of low oxygen, like lung diseases, high altitude, cyanotic heart diseases, and carbon monoxide poisoning. Inappropriate polycythemia is due to an inappropriately high secretions of erythropoietin from renal cell carcinoma or hepatocellular carcinoma or it could also be cerebellar hemangioblastoma. The presentation of polycythemia is due to the fact that there is an increased red cell mass and increased viscosity of blood in the blood vessels. In the CNS, it can present as headaches, dizziness, tinnitus, and visual disturbances. Due to increased viscosity, blood slows down and is likely to clot, leading to deep vein thrombosis or DVT, pulmonary embolisms, strokes, transient ischemic attack, and thrombophlebitis. Bleeding can occur from skin and mucous membranes due to platelets not working properly. Erythromyalgia, which is burning pain in hands and feet. Pruritus, especially after warm shower, is due to the release of mast cells and histamine. And due to the release of histamine, symptoms related to peptic ulcer disease can also be present. Gout symptoms due to increased breakdown of nucleated cells with release of purines. And these purines are converted to uric acid. On physical exam, plenomegaly and hepatomegaly may be noted due to the congestion in the blood vessels. Pleothora, which is described as a ruddy complexion, can also be seen. And the reason is due to vas vascular congestion. Hepatic vein thrombosis, which is associated with Bud Chiari syndrome. It presents with abdominal pain, ascites, and hepatomegaly. Dural sinus thrombosis presents with headache, 
that gets worse over several days and can also present with stroke-like symptoms or seizures. Retinal vein thrombosis may present as painless vision loss. The way to diagnose the type of polycythemia is by certain labs like RBC mass, plasma volume, oxygen saturation, and erythropoietin. This slide is very high yield. Relative polycythemia is due to volume state, which is low. So plasma volume is decreased and everything else is normal. Absolute primary polycythemia, which is due to polycythemia rubra vera, is caused by neoplastic proliferation and maturation of erythroid, megakaryocytic, and granulocytic elements. This means that the bone marrow makes too many red blood cells. So RBC mass and plasma volume is increased. And this causes the EPO to be low because there is already enough RBCs in the blood. So through negative feedback, the EPO decreases. This is a very high yield point as it is the only one in which EPO is low. The oxygen saturation is unaffected. Secondary appropriate polycythemia we said was due to hypoxia. So that means the oxygen saturation is low. Low oxygen is a stimulus for EPO from the bone marrow to increase RBC production. Plasma volume in this case is unaffected. Inappropriate polycythemia is due to inappropriate secretion of EPO, which leads to an increased RBC production. And the plasma volume and oxygen saturation are unaffected in this case. The treatment. The mainstay of therapy involves phlebotomy or taking out excess blood from veins to improve circulation by lowering viscosity. This is the most efficient way to lower hemoglobin and hematocrit to normal levels. Drugs such as hydroxyurea, which is an anti-neoplastic drug, is also used. A negrolide reduces platelet formation. Interferon alpha has also been shown in some studies to be helpful. And other drugs like aspirin, allopurinol for gout, and antihistamines for pruritus can also be used.